Today's news from Japan is that Shinzo Abe, the new Prime Minister, has introduced a new 10 trillion yen stimulus package, which the government hopes can boost the GDP in the economy by up to 2% and create up to 600,000 jobs. To discuss this, we're joined by Andrew Cahoon, Head of Sovereign Racings at Fitch in Asia. Thank you for joining us. Hello. We've seen these kinds of short-term stimulus measures a number of times before. In this case, what do you think is going to be the real impact on the economy of Japan? Well, the new government has outlined a three-pronged economic uh, regeneration or stimulus program. The first prong is the fiscal measures that you've described, um, 10 trillion yen of spending amounting to about 2% of GDP. The second prong is what they call a more flexible monetary policy. Um, and so far, we've already seen some, uh, I guess, impact from that in terms of the nearly 10% depreciation of the yen. Uh, since mid-November. And the third prong is measures to promote investment and that could be more of the structural uh, side of it. Now for us um, the key point will be balancing uh, the impact on the budget numbers versus what uh, bang for the buck I guess they get in terms of growth. There's, there's already been some questions raised as to how much of this money is really new. Some of the about five trillion some economists think is, is money that's already been pledged anyway uh, and what the real GDP impact is going to be. Even if only, even if only uh, five or six trillion of this is really new money, I mean, that's still enough to have a bit of an impact on the bond market, right? I mean, what do you think is going to be the impact on how bonds are trading and also ultimately from your point of view on the, the, sovereign, the, the strength of the sovereign? The impact on the bond market will partly depend on the interaction with monetary policy and one of the uh, aspects of the new government's policy since they took office has been to um, uh, seek to redefine the objective of the Bank of Japan to set them at a 2% inflation target. Uh, for us, the key issue in terms of resolving the negative outlook on Japan's A-plus rating, uh, where we took the rating down to in May last year, uh, the key issue is whether Japan has a credible strategy to consolidate its debt level uh, over the medium term um, rather than uh, over a, say, 12-month outlook. And it, I mean, it doesn't look like that at the moment, does it? Because I mean, it up to I think over a quarter of the of the the money that the government spends goes on servicing the debt they've got outstanding. We've got some charts that show uh, exactly how the, the the growing difference between tax receipts and the amount of money that's spent on servicing the debt, uh, uh, or you know, and spending overall. Um, I mean, is this going to is this putting real further pressure on the rating of Japan? For us as a ratings agency, uh, we'll look to assess the new government's economic and uh, fiscal strategy as a whole uh, and in detail once we have the opportunity to do so. Uh, we don't see ourselves as under any pressure to resolve the negative outlook on Japan's rating within this year. Um, but the key issue, as I've said, for uh, which way we resolve the outlook on Japan's A-plus rating um, will be whether there is a credible plan to stabilise the debt ratios over the medium term. And finally, uh, you mentioned the Bank of Japan earlier and the new uh, uh, inflation targeting regime that they're, they're, that they're going to be adopting. Uh, I mean, is that the more important aspect, do you think, of, of what's going to help, if anything, the Japanese economy to, to really start to recover? Well, our an analysis suggests that the Japanese economy is very trade-driven. If you look at investment in Japan, it's more driven by exports than by domestic consumption, which is the opposite pattern to the US and perhaps very much as you'd expect. Uh, so if the monetary policy uh, framework succeeds in delivering a sustained weakening of the yen, and if that is supported for, ex for Japan's exports, um, then that could in turn be uh, positive for growth and hence for the um, debt to GDP ratio in over the um, forecast period. Uh, that said, the downside risk, and I would stress it's a tail risk and not something that's in our base case, is that if inflation expectations become unhinged, there could be an impact on JGB yields, um, which if it were sufficiently pronounced would be negative for the banks given the amount of JGBs they hold on their balance sheets. Um, and also for sovereign funding. And one of the key things that supports Japan's rating at A plus is the fact that they can still issue debt so cheaply, um, around 82 basis points at 10 year. Um, if that came unstuck, then given the relatively short average maturity of Japan's debt, it could rapidly impact um, the uh, strength of the public finances. Well, it'll be fascinating to see how this develops over coming months. Andrew Cahoon, thank you very much. Thank you.